Colin Robert. So Colin was chubby. He weighed eight pounds, two ounces. He had a nose just like my husband and my son. And he had long toes like me. And he was beautiful and chubby. Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a podcast where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter Red, and on this episode, Stephanie is telling the story of her second son, Colin, who was stillborn at 39 weeks due to a court accident. As a word of caution to our listeners, this story contains emotional triggers of stillbirth and infant loss. Please keep yourself emotionally and mentally healthy and seek help if needed. Also be aware that these birth stories may differ from his or her partners as these accounts are told from their own perspective through the lens of trauma, heartache, and the passage of time. Please respect our moms and dads who are brave and gracious to share their children with us. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do on a day-to-day basis um, now and then also maybe at the time of Colin's birth? Okay, so I am a 33-year-old mom. So I have a two-year-old, so I spend a lot of my time juggling work and chasing after him and, you know, coming up with play dates and fun things to do with him. I also try to go to the gym and I do like to drink wine with my friends and shop a little bit. Um, Yeah, I just, I don't have much free time. (laughs) (laughs) I am sure. Yeah, with all of that. So you work full time as well? Yes. Oh man. Oh yeah, that is a lot of juggling. (laughs) Oh yeah. And um, where can you, as a little bit of context, can you tell us where you're, where you guys are living um, currently and was it the same place that when you had Colin? Yeah. So I've lived in Rhode Island my whole life. We bought a house in Cumberland, Rhode Island, probably about four years ago. So we live there. Um, Yeah. Do you like that area? Yeah. I never left Rhode Island. Um, It has, you know, Providence with the, you know, city and it has, we're near the beaches and we're near Boston. So it's it's a good little spot. Um, We live in kind of the suburbs right now in Cumberland. Um, Yeah. And my family lives close. So that's kind of another reason why we stayed in the area. Yeah. And in your, who's in your family right now? So you mentioned your son and your husband as well? Yep. So my husband, um, we have two cats, Charlie and Mo, which <laughs> we love and sleep with every night. <laughs> um, I have a sister I am close with who was also pregnant with me. Um, she was one week behind. Oh. Um, so I'm close with my sister. Um, I have my mom who lives about 10 minutes away. Um, and I have a lot of friends in the area, you know, college friends, high school friends that I see regularly. So that's yeah, great. I have a lot going on in, over here in Rhode Island. Yeah, that's, it sounds like you have a nice full life. That's great. Um, and also to, so we understand how long ago this happened at the time of this recording. When was Colin born? Colin was born July 22nd, 2019 at 549 AM. Oh, so it really has been just a titch over six months ago. Is that right? Yeah, about seven months. Yeah. You're still very new, Stephanie. <laughs> yeah. You're still very new. Some days it feels like it was like long, a long time ago. And other days it was just like yesterday. I can just picture everything just so clearly. And yeah, it's it's an odd feeling. Yeah. I'm going by. and Yeah, completely. So tell me a little bit about your pregnancy. Did you, was it planned? Was it um, ha- did you have any fertility issues going into um, your pregnancy with Colin? Yeah, so I got pregnant pretty quickly. I would say within the first couple first couple of months of trying, um, we had our first son that was you know a little over one. So we kind of wanted you know kids close in age, um, and I just didn't want to put a whole you know three year or four year kind of in between. I kind of wanted to get it done with and yeah. have the kids you know quickly together. Um, so yeah, we, we tried and we got pregnant pretty quickly and I remember wrapping up the pregnancy test and, um, I had it on the counter for Sam when he came home from work to show him and he was shocked. He thought it was, it it would take a little longer. Yeah. (laughs) Not so Um, much, I guess. But we were excited and nervous, um, anxious, but excited, you know, Uh, we're going to, you know, have another baby. Um, so 
Yeah. And I had no, no issues with my pregnancy, really. You know, my doctor told me I was boring every time <laughs> I went for a visit, like jokingly, like, yeah. oh, you're boring. Um, I felt fine. I was sick, you know, a couple of times with some morning sickness, but yeah, I, it was great. I mean, I had a good pregnancy. Oh man. You can't, can't beat that, right? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't bad. Um, you guys were planning on, you guys are planning on having, it sounds like family and kids are, has always been in your picture. You guys always have wanted to have kids and a big family or just, you know, uh, I think we always wanted like two kids. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely I always wanted to be a mom. I couldn't imagine just what, what would I do with my life if I wasn't a mom, <laughs> you know? Um, but you know, coloring and playing and singing, you know, and reading books before bed. Like I just wanted to do that with my life. Um, so definitely, um, I definitely wanted to be a mom and I loved it. I had my, you know, Ben, my first son, and it was just awesome, you know, you know, nurturing him and holding him and raising him and teaching him. And I just had to do it all over. Yeah, that's great. And also, as, um, so with Ben, did you guys have any issues with him or was no. he great? Also, uh, pregnancy was good. Birth was good. Yeah, Ben was great. So his pregnancy, I was, I would say I worked out a lot more. I had more time because I, <laughs> right, right. I was my first pregnancy. Um, so I worked out, you know, I ate healthy. I was, you know, I only gained like 30 pounds and, you know, I, I felt like, oh, this isn't that bad, you know? Um, so my pregnancy with him was great. Um, his delivery was totally normal. Um, I had a vaginal delivery with him and there was no complications except for being in labor for a yeah. long time, yeah. my first time around. <laughs> um, but yeah, things were great with him. And, you know, he was an easy baby and to take care of. And, you know, it was, it was totally fine. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about when you found out that Colin didn't have a heartbeat. Um, so I was uh, 39 weeks pregnant. Um, I knew I was going to have a baby any day. You know, I'm excited. I went to bed um, the night before and at like two in the morning, I woke up and I had this leg pain, this um, just like kind of jolt me out of bed, but it wasn't uncommon. I did have like sciatic pain, sciatic pain um, throughout my pregnancy. So I was like, I just need to jump out of bed and kind of walk this off, you know? So I, I started walking around and, you know, my stomach just didn't feel right. Like it was just kind of, you know, the uh, kind of getting con like a contraction feeling, but it was just kind of like woozy. It just didn't feel right. And I remember waking my husband up and saying, hey, like, I think I'm in labor. Um, I don't feel right. I don't know if it's a contraction because it's not that, you know, like contraction feeling, but I just didn't feel right. And I was walking around and, and then the contractions kind of started coming and they were kind of quick and it, it felt a little different from my first um, labor. But my, my husband was like, you know, it might not be anything like just calm down um, because I was in labor for 25 hours with my first. Um, oh, my goodness. First, and I was sent home when I went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So he was just like, you know, just wait a little bit. Let's, you know, count your contractions. And then I was like, OK. Uh, but I called my mom because I called my mom on everything. <laughs> so I called her because the plan was she was supposed to come to the house to watch my son if I went in labor in the middle of the night. Yeah. And she was like, well, call me back when it's serious and then I should come over. So I laid down and I was like, you know what? These contractions, they just feel like they're getting fast or they're like just something just didn't feel right. Um, so I just thought I was in labor and it was moving quicker. So I called my mom kind of 10, 15 minutes later, I'd say, and said, come, come over. I just want to go to the hospital. So she came over pretty quickly. Um, we, you know, packed up our, our stuff. We had our hospital bag. Um, you know, I wrote my to-do list, um, to take care of my son. I, my cat ran out outside at two in the morning. I had to get my cat back in and get my, um, my son's daycare clothes together. So I ran downstairs to get my son's daycare clothes out of the dryer. Um, and we kind of just went and I remember being excited and nervous, like, this is it. I'm in labor. Um, my contractions when we left the house were pretty quick. They were close together. Um, they weren't extremely painful, but I knew there were contractions. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like, this is a good time to go. Let's go. Um, so we, you know, we, we got there pretty quickly. I live about 10 minutes away from the hospital, 15 minutes. So I, I would say from when it started to when we got to the hospital was pretty quick. Um, and we walked in and 
my husband put me in a wheelchair because I was like, ah, get me in. Like, yeah, I'm loud to begin with, but definitely in labor, I'm loud. So he put me in a wheelchair and I was like, someone see me like I'm in labor, ah, you know. Um, so they wheeled me in to the triage. I think they call it the emergency room at um, Women and Infants Hospital in Providence. Um, and they wheeled me in and my husband stayed outside in, in the waiting room because they kind of like take you first and the husband waits and they kind of ask you some questions like, you know, are you safe at home? Um, they ask you those questions before. So they like to separate you from your husband. Um, so they, I was just laying there. I'm in labor and they checked me out and I had a feeling, I don't know if they told me, so things are a little blurry to me. Um, I don't know if they told me or if I knew, I knew I was probably like six, seven centimeters. Like I was progressing. I, I was, I was getting there and um, I, I, it was just in pain. I remember just being like, ah, like kind of snipping with the nurse. Cause I was just in pain. Um, and she was young. She was about 24 years old, the nurse. Um, and she, she was trying to fight, you know, put a Doppler on my stomach to check. And she was just like, I, I, I can't find it. Like just, kind of casually. I was like, well, just keep looking, you know, like the baby probably moved, like just find it. Like I wasn't even that concerned when she was kind of struggling at first. Just I just thought maybe she didn't know what she was doing or, you know, the baby's moving because he was very active, Colin. He did move around a lot. And I just, I thought, you know, it's fine. Um, and then she, you know, a couple of minutes went by and she still couldn't find it. And She's talking about having to put me in for an ultrasound to check. And I'm like, what? I'm like, can you get my husband in the room? I, I remember saying, so he comes in and I'm like, Sam, I can't find the heartbeat. Like, and he, he was like, well, we'll find it. Like, you know, and we were just thought they were struggling finding it. Um, so they gave us an ultrasound and then there still wasn't a heartbeat. And then we're like, well, what does that mean? Um, you know, and then there was a nurse that she kept trying to flag down like the main doctor on call. Um, and it was, just seemed to be a busy night. And so this person seems to come in the room with kind of authority, like I'm the doctor, you know, walks in the room and I'm like, OK, like what's going on? Like, tell me. And just this flat, calm. I'm sorry. I'm like, You're sorry. Why are you sorry? What? What, do you, what does that mean? You're sorry you can't find the heartbeat? Like, talking about I'm sorry she goes I'm sorry we can't find the heartbeat and I'm like well what does that mean what does that mean you can't find the heartbeat like what does it mean though no. and then it just you, it doesn't sink in until like a minute or two and you're like there's no heartbeat my baby's not alive because you can't live without a heartbeat it just slowly like processes and you still are like I don't believe this though, you know? Um, yeah. And then from there, everything, I think I kind of blacked out. Um, I couldn't deal with this. I was in like serious labor pains. Like I just couldn't deal with what they just had said. Um, I called my mom to tell her. I was like, I tell my mom everything. And I just had to tell my mom. I called her and she kind of had a similar reaction. Like, what do you mean? You can't, there's no heartbeat. I'm like, mom, there's no heartbeat. There's no heartbeat. I'm in labor. I'm going to have my baby. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, there's no heartbeat, mom. And she's like, well, don't find it. That's like, um, and then I kind of just ended the call with her. I think we lost service. Um, or I just couldn't talk anymore. It was painful. So we ended the call and I remember just getting into the fetal position and just kind of blacked out. I remember counting, budgeting, and thinking of bills that I owe and just numbers and budgeting. I don't know why. I just like couldn't deal with this. I wasn't cooperating really with the nurse's request. I just was in an, another world. And my water broke. And I remember just like having it just drip all over me. I didn't even have a reaction. And um, they had to like just clean me up. I was just absolutely helpless. I just didn't care. I just wanted to disappear. I didn't want to go further and deliver Colin. I, I kind of just shut down. Um, I couldn't deal with this. Like I can't deliver my dead son. 
how am I gonna deliver him and face this? He's gonna be dead. How am I gonna do this? How do you actually deliver a baby when they're not alive? Also, I thought the baby was alive to deliver. I just didn't understand how I would do this. Um, and I didn't want to face it at all. Um, I asked for a C-section. I was like, I can't push. I don't have the strength. I'm not doing it. Um, so I did just yell that out. Um, and then I also yelled, get my doctor here. Like I was furious. Um, because my whole pregnancy was fine. Like, why is he not alive? What happened? Um, I was in so much pain though. Um, they gave me something to help with the pain. Um, but I was just in so much pain. I was around eight, nine centimeters now. So they didn't offer, were you planning on getting, um, an epidural or, um, what was your yeah. original plan? Was it a vaginal birth? Yeah, I had an epidural with my first son and I was planning on having another one. Okay. Um, but you were probably yeah. too far along that they were like, uh, it's probably not a good idea or. Well, um, the anesthesiologist was busy. Um, oh, okay. so yeah, they pretty much told me that I probably won't get an epidural. Um, so they wheeled me up into like kind of the room you deliver in mm -hmm. and then my doctor comes in and you know, I'm kind of yelling at him what happened, like why, and I, I'm kind of furious at this point. And then he's like, I'll numb you, but you know, the anesthesiologist is busy. I don't think you'll have an epidural. And then I started yelling, like, you're gonna make me deliver my dead baby without an epidural. I was furious. Um, I think I was just so mad at him. And um, I remember him like getting on the phone and trying to get the anesthesiologist in the room. My husband was yelling like, how do you not have another anesthesiologist on duty in this hospital? Like, um, I was like 10 centimeters and I go, I'm not pushing. And I just curled up and refused to push. And they said, you're going to have to, you're 10 centimeters. Um, I was like, no, <laughs> I was just not doing it. I went into my world again and just laid there probably for a half an hour at 10 centimeters. What um, time of the day was this? Um, By this now. was like early morning now. So he was delivered at 5.49. So probably around 5 a.m. Um, yeah, I just refused. I'm like, you're not going to numb me. Like, I don't want to do this. I just shut down. I was like, I'm not doing this. I, I don't want to face this at all. And um, so finally the anesthesiologist comes in the room after, you know, felt like forever um and said okay i'm here like you know and she was rushing around and she gave me the epidural um this is a blur i don't even remember getting the epidural um but i pushed just a couple of times and he came out um i didn't see him come out my husband did and um they were struggling the cord was the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck very tight and the doctor struggling to, you know, get his fingers to cut it. Um, this is what my husband had told me. And then they took him and put him on my chest. And he was heavy and warm and chubby. Like, so chubby, which I loved. Um, he was beautiful. He looked like us. But he just wasn't crying. I thought maybe, okay, you know, he'll cry. Like, maybe they're wrong. Like, this is a bad dream. Like, maybe just they're wrong. Um, but he, they weren't. He was he was blue and gray. He was white around the neck. You could tell what happened. Um, and he just was sleeping, like, just not really opening his eyes. Um, I just wanted to breastfeed him. That was the first thing I wanted to do. I, um, and they put him in my boob and um, just holding and crying and yelling. Um, just yelling at my doctor. Um, just, what happened? What happened? What did I do? What did I do? That was my first. I thought I had killed him. I did something to kill him. I was supposed to take care of him. He was in my belly. I had no clue this happened. What happened? What did I do? And I was, I just, um, I just felt so hopeless, like a piece of shit, to tell you the truth. I really thought I did something to cause this. 
Um, and then I also was like, happy to meet him. Yeah. And excited to see his face and hold him. Like, I had a baby. Like, there's a little bit of that too, even though he's not alive. I was just like trying to soak him up and I still was happy to hold him too. Um, so, yeah, um, the nurses were so comforting to me. They cried with me. They just walked me through everything. I had no clue what to do. Um, and they were like, you're going to want to take pictures. Um, so they took pictures of me and Colin. You're going to want to dress him up. Um, you're going to want to bathe him. So um, we were doing that. Um, I did have a conversation with my doctor, like, what happened? And he said the cord was just too tight around his neck. Um, and it looks like he passed within hours of coming here. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of all he said. And I was like, I'm never having kids again. I, I this like, I'm not. And he's just like, well, you should be fine. This shouldn't happen again. It's like getting struck by lightning twice. Like, you can have another kid. And he was kind of, and I was like, I don't want to talk about that. You know, and then I was like getting mad that he was talking about my other kid. And I'm like, yeah. even though I kind of obviously was, I think everything he said, I was just getting angry with. I don't think he could win. I was just furious with him um, and myself. Like it was one of our faults or something. Um, but yeah, and the nurses were, he, you know, he, he was nice in his own way, but he was also very short and just kind of got out of there, you know. Um, the nurses really were really nurturing and so loving and warm and just walked me through everything. Um, I was just like helpless. Um, we had our family come. Um, so I would say about an hour and a half um, after calling our family came in the room, they all poured in. I was shocked to actually see all of them there. I didn't know they knew about this. Um, I was just talking to my family, you know, I'm having a baby any day. And now I'm like, here's my baby, he's dead. Hi, you know. Um, they all held Colin, and I could tell it was so hard for them to hold Colin. It's just not pleasant to, to hold a dead baby, and especially, you know, their loved one. Um, he was starting to look not alive. You know, he had his blue lips. Um, I could tell he had passed, and I could tell it was, like, hard for people to hold him. But I also was like, here's my baby, you know, at the same time as I was giving Colin to them. Yeah, it was, it was hard. We all cried. My sister was in the room. She's 38 weeks pregnant at the time. She was due any day. It was her first baby. And I felt bad. She, you know, she's in the room with me. And obviously this just had, I just felt bad for her having to see this. And obviously it would make her nervous. Um... Yeah, we bathed Colin, and it was just hard to touch him. I tried to clean him as best I could, but it was just hard to to, to just look at him and see him not alive. It was just really hard to see him dead. Um, yeah. I just was hope, like, I just was so low. I just... I didn't sink in. Like, it was just a blur, a bad dream. I wish I soaked in more of him and just studied him more and held him more. We had a cooling car. He was kind of in on and off. But I just tried to take him in. We had a photographer come from Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep, who the nurse suggested we take pictures with. Um, she said, you're, you know, you're going to want to look back at pictures. And I was like, Ryan, I don't want anyone taking pictures of this. This is just a horrible experience. I'm so glad they did come in because it's all I have, these pictures, to, to go back. I don't have anything else. So we dressed, you know, we took pictures. We dressed him in his take-home outfit mm -hmm. that I ordered on Etsy. This is Colin. Oh. I actually have a picture I'm holding with me. 
um, of him. He's chubby. <laughs> He's kind of posing, you know, we, we, we kind of posed him and um, it says Colin on his hat and his little onesie says, hello. Um, <laughs> He's so cute. He really is. (laughs) Um, I just want him so bad. I can't believe it. I can't believe he's not here. Um, yeah. So, we just, like, soaked in him as much as we could, but it got to be so hard for my husband. I, I could see him just... He, hard to hold Colin as the day progressed he started to look um more not alive um it just was so hard we decided to leave around 4 p.m so we spent about 11 hours with him oh, I wish I spent longer I, I, I criticized myself or not spending longer or just scooping him up and taking him home I totally would I don't know um I wish I wish I didn't leave I I get mad at myself for having the strength to walk out of that hospital room I don't know how I did it as a mother I I get mad at myself I know that that's kind of what you you were supposed to do um but yeah that's, that was one of the hardest things for us too. How do you do that? Yeah. You're right. How do you do that? Yeah, I look back. I swear I don't even remember totally walking out of the hospital. You know, they they walk you out a separate entrance so you're away from crying babies. And um, I don't even remember totally, but um, I just I stay up at night thinking, how did he go from my stomach where I was? trying to keep him safe to a morgue and the hospital to a grave and just the chain of events and just thinking about this little body it just kills me I stay up at night just crying about that um how I could walk out of that room you're a piece of like I just feel so low like I don't know how I I could just move on or just live after not having him with me after he's in the ground like thinking like that is just it just gets me panicky and and really really sad yeah it is really well you have experienced something that was um, very traumatic and what do you yeah it is so difficult and to think of all the things that you should have done or you could have done is that that can be really tricky. Yeah, I I have a lot of guilt and my you know I talk with my husband about it and he's like why are you, it's not your fault but I'm like you don't understand I was supposed to take care of him he was in my stomach I'm his mother I'm supposed to take care and care for him and he died in my stomach and he was strangled to death by his umbilical cord in my stomach how it just seems so evil and I wish I could protect him. I had no clue. And how do I not know as a mother? Don't you have a mother's instinct? And I just don't understand how it happened either. And I don't know if it's like, the you know, I had a sec- second cup of coffee some days. Is it that, like that caused him to be a little hyperactive and maybe get tangled in the cord? Or is it me running down the stairs to get my son's clothes out of the dryer that just added more stress to it? Um, I, or, or I went to the beach the day before and it was like 99 degrees out. Is it, you know, it, like, what did I do? Like, I, of course I didn't ask for this to happen, but did something I do facilitate it or, you know, cause the situation to be worse? Like if I didn't go to the beach or if I didn't have a second cup of coffee, like, you know, every now and then, like, would it have been different? Would Colin have been here? And that's what I really beat myself up about. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I, Stephanie, I'm sure so many people have told you this, but it's not your fault. And you, you think it is because you are, you feel as a mother and I felt, I feel this way too, that I was given this charge to keep my son safe and bring him into this world. But you can't, you can't stay there or else. 
you're gonna you're gonna lose yourself too so yeah you're gonna lose yeah. yourself too so you gotta be careful. I know it, it did help the you know the days after you know obviously it was in a blur and people flood kind of flood you with sympathy cards and food and flowers and texts and phone calls and it's like you're like what I, I was I was just pregnant a couple of days ago expecting a baby now I have a sympathy card about losing a child yeah it's um, so rough you're like what it's just it's surreal like I can't even process this I still felt like I was pregnant I was still wearing my maternity clothes like like this didn't just happen like this awful thing like it's hard to just process the couple of days after um, it doesn't sink in and then your milk comes in <laughs> and that's the worst the worst it really um, is you're googling how to stop your milk because, instead of baby newborn things um and then i called my doctor and i had another conversation like what happened like he had already talked to me in the hospital but I, he needed to tell me again and I kind of put him on, you know, rapid fire questions again. And um, we were talking and he was just kind of, I don't know. He's, he's kind of a goofy guy. He was just like, it's not like you were jumping on trampolines. Not that that would cause it. And I'm like, he's like, I'm like, yeah. And he goes, it wasn't like you were doing hard drugs. And I'm like, yeah, of course I wasn't. Okay. And then he's like, wait till your iron kind of goes down a little bit and then you can try again. And I was I knew he, he was trying to be helpful in his own way, but I just felt like, oh, like, I don't want to talk like this. Um, yeah. um, and I asked, can I ask I'm you sorry. a quick, oh no, you're totally fine, Stephanie. I just had a quick question. So they obviously um, identified the cause. It was his, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck quite tightly. Um, did, yeah. Did they end up doing yeah. an additional, any sort of autopsy or, or did you guys feel like that that was, you pretty you pretty much had a conclusive idea of what happened and and you felt okay just going forward without an autopsy yeah so in the hospital i would say within 2 hours of him being born they're like do you want an autopsy and i said no i do not want to cut open my baby's body um i could tell what happened you, you, was, you know the umbilical cord was around the neck and it got to be too tight and it was clear to me that that's what happened so i mm -hmm. didn't feel like i I needed, I, at the time I felt like I didn't need to know further and I couldn't think of cutting his body open and, and doing an autopsy. So I was said no. Okay. Um, and then my doctor said, you know, you're lucky to, to know what the cause is because some, some mothers don't know the cause. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm so lucky. Like, <laughs> I mean, I think everything he yeah. said, I was just like <laughs> in attack mode. Um, but yeah, I kind of just said no to the autopsy. Looking back now, trying to find answers, sometimes I'm like, maybe I should have. But I, it was kind of clear what happened at the time. So I said no. They ask, you know, if you're at over the 20 week mark, you know, you have to either bury or cremate your child. Which I was like, why am I picking this out? What burial? Like, I'm just gonna have a funeral now. I remember it was just like, what? Um, and I picked a burial. I couldn't think of, you know, having him cremated. Um, so I picked burial. So yeah, I didn't do an autopsy. Um, and then, you know, obviously in the weeks that followed, I went on, you know, a Google mission. Like it, I knew it was called, you know, a nuchal cord, a tight nuchal cord. So mm -hmm. I was like, what is a nuchal cord? And I'm Googling and trying to figure out the umbilical cord and I'm, reading all this stuff and I'm trying to, you know, be a doctor overnight. Um, and, you know, I, I found a lot of blogs and other moms that had umbilical cord accidents and I was like, what is this? And I'm reading about it and there's like a lot of similar stories and it made me feel like I wasn't alone. Like this happens, um, to other people like during birth, um, like in labor, like what is this? And, I kind of, it, it did make me feel like not alone. And it also made me feel awful that this happens. Um, I remember in the hospital after I had Colin, my mom was in the room and I told her, like, call my boss to tell him because it was a Monday. Yeah. And, you know, I do get a lot of calls on my cell phone from clients and people I work with. So um, I wanted her to tell him, like, I had the baby because I was kind of due any day and what happened kind of. 
And so she was in the room and she called him and she's like, Stephanie had a stillbirth. And I yelled at her. I'm like, this isn't a stillbirth. What are you talking about, mom? You know, what you, this, this is not a stillbirth. Like, what is, and then I remember thinking, what is a stillbirth exactly? I, I've heard the term, I've read about it, but I just kind of breezed over it. Like, that doesn't happen. That's, that's like 1800s. Like, like, you think of miscarriage, you know, that's a concern, but you don't hear anything about stillbirth. Um, so I was kind of angry with her. Like, you just summed this whole thing up to stillbirth. This is not what I told her. This is not that. And she's like, it is, it is a stillbirth. And I don't know. I just sat there thought like, you know, that there was a term that what happened. Um, I still don't love the stillbirth term. Nope. It's um, not great. Yeah. It's pretty crummy. In fact. Yeah. I just, yeah, I guess, you know, it's, what happened? I don't want to be part of this club or have this happen to me, but it did. And yeah. Yeah. So when you got home and you're going to bury your son, you decided on that. Yeah. Um, how did that go? All of that planning. Oh, so I'm, I'm, you know, dealing with my milk and I was pumping and. Oh, so you did pump. I did pump. I remember laying in bed and I just wanted to nurture him so bad. Like I, I was so engorged too. I was black and blue. Um, I pumped a lot of milk. Um, it made me feel good at first because I felt like, oh, here, you know, the bottles were stacking up. Like, oh, I'm feeding him. Like, I think your hormones and your your motherly instinct is like, I got to feed him. I got to take care of him. And, your, your body doesn't understand that your baby's not here. So you have the milk and your hormones are, you're supposed to care for him. And then your brain's like, he's not here. Um, it was just a weird contrast. Um, but I pumped and I actually liked that my boobs were producing milk. <laughs> um, and then I actually buried my milk later on with him, which sounds weird, but it had you to did. be with I, him. I like, it made me I, feel great. I like that a lot. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, it made me feel like here you go. Here's it made me feel like it was his. It it did it was comforting. Um but I had talked to my doctor on that phone call and he's like, you know, you could just take some Tylenol and I'm like cuz I was asking him what can I do? How do I stop my milk? And I guess all they do is tell you to like take Tylenol and kind of deal with it. Um and I took it took about a week. Um and then when it was over, I, I missed, I missed um, having the milk. It was really sad when your, your boobs kind of deplete and the milk goes away. Um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's like I liked, I, I gave birth. Like, and that's, I kind of wanted to yell that to everyone. Like, I had a baby. I gave birth. I, my milk is here. I, I have postpartum. I'm recovering, you know. I'm wearing my mesh panties like I, I, I gave like everybody birth. else does. <laughs> yeah, um, I just kind of yeah. Um, yeah, we buried Colin um, five days later. The funeral was just the worst. Um, so my mom did a lot of the preparing. She took the week out of work, and um, she had met with you know the funeral home. And I kind of chimed in a little bit, but it, I just like did not want to, I didn't want to plan this I didn't want this to happen mm -hmm. a lot of it had to do if I plan or if I pay for this it's kind of me confirming this is what I want somehow so it was really hard for me to make decisions or even pay for anything with the funeral because I felt like I do not want this <laughs> like um so my mom did a lot of the planning um I helped pick out the casket because I wanted to make sure it was nice I remember yelling at the funeral home. This looks like a cardboard box. I want it nicer. And I just wanted him to have a nice casket. Um, I picked out his outfit from H&M. A little bow tie. And, <laughs> you know, like a comfortable, like, newborn dressed up outfit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I picked out... Uh, I'm trying to think what else did I do. I didn't really do a whole lot to tell you the truth. I just kind of 
you know, confirmed where I'd like him to be buried, which is near my house. We had to buy the plots for my husband and myself. Um, so it ended up being pretty expensive. Um, I just was like, I can't believe I'm in a graveyard picking out where I want to be buried. Yeah. And I remember yelling. So grim, not doesn't yelling, it? but I was snipping with the burial. Like, I want these weeds trimmed and right near here. And uh, I don't know. It was just a surreal week of dealing with this. And then just... Ugh, it just was the worst. Did you have a service? Also, yeah, so or? that Saturday, um, we had a service at a local church. And we're Catholic. We're not too religious. Um, we got married in a church. Um, at my wedding, they called me Samantha, even though my name is <laughs> Stephanie. And my husband is Samuel. We... <laughs> I mean, I was kind of a little upset. I'm like, you couldn't get it right on my, my wedding day. And, uh, come on. But it was kind of more of a joke. Everyone kind of laughed at my wedding. And then we had um, the church for you know, the service for Colin. And he had his little, he was up there with a little baby casket and flowers and pictures of him. I want people to see him. And it was kind of like a wake where um, people like came up and, you know, said something to us before and they kneeled down near Colin. So we did that for like, and a half an hour and then we had a mass um but during the mass they called me samantha i was just like come on like how do you get my name wrong like <laughs> that again. is funny <laughs> but i was kind of like oh like i kind of rolled my eyes it wasn't yeah. like i was upset yeah. but i'm like okay um but yeah we had a funeral it was okay i i wasn't too connected with this church that we had the funeral in um we kind of just booked it, you know, fast. It wasn't the church I grew up with, but um, yeah, they didn't. We had a lot of people show up. A lot of my friends and my husband's family and friends too. And there was a lot of people from my work that I was surprised seeing. Um, I was a blubbering mess. I just chased after the coffin when they brought it out. It was just so hard. To, they kept saying his name, and it was just like I can't believe I'm having a funeral for my baby right now. Like. I don't want to bury him. So it was just just really, really hard. I was on medication, so a lot of it was blurry, and I was kind of numb. Um, were you recovering? Very hard. Were you recovering okay um, physically? I mean, just gave birth to an eight-pound baby, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, have a one, I had a one-year-old I was chasing around the church and holding, and to keep them quiet with crayons and so I didn't have the whole chance to um I I I didn't stay in bed like some people do I had a lot going on and I'm just a high energy person anyway but yeah I didn't I I had to just run around I I physically I felt fine um I wasn't in a whole lot of pain it was my I I kind of um I have childbearing hips I like to say so (laughs) um (laughs) I don't know if that helped, but um, yeah, I physically I was fine, and I just I have a one at a one year old I was chasing after, and I wanted to make sure things were you know nice for the funeral too, and I just didn't have a second to think about postpartum care that much, I guess. Um, yeah, I remember I I had I bought an outfit and just started crying, checking out with the funeral dress, and I told the clerk, hey. I'm, my baby's funeral I just had a baby four days ago and now I'm buying this dress and she just looked at me with horror like I felt like I had to tell her she gave me a big discount I don't know if she should have and I wasn't trying to but I was like okay well it is um it is what it is right there yeah (laughs) oh but that week was tough it was just numb it didn't set in the, the how how the depth of this the real loss of this it just felt like surreal yeah that's um, it is <laughs> that's a great word it just is like what's happening to me yeah yeah and people surprise you with how supportive they are i was surprised my friends my family they do they do warm your heart um or you know they they are there for you and they, you know some people say things better than other things or know what to say or mm-hmm. know how to be more caring some people are awkward and but um some people like really you know i had a lot of friends that like would drop off food and make dinners and check on me and come over and bring wine and let me talk and 
you know, let me tell my birth story like three times and drink wine with me and cry with me. And, you know, I appreciate that. That was like soup for the soul. Um, so I, I did have a lot of support and I'm thankful for that. That's awesome. Yeah, that is, it's so comforting and you just are so grateful when you realize how many people love you and want to take care of you, right? Yeah. Yeah. My sister was so great. She's like coming over and stocking my fridge and she's due any day. And she ended up delivering a week after Colin. Um, And I went to the hospital, the same hospital and saw her. I had to, like, I was like, this is going to be hard, but like, uh, I need to be there with my younger sisters, a mom. I want to see her. I want to see my nephew, Milo. Oh, that's such a cute name. He's, yeah, he's so cute. He looks like a little Italian meatball. Um, <laughs> and he's, and it's, it's beautiful. Like people are, are saying to me, it must be so hard, but this, that is not the hardest part. And it's actually really nice to see him grow and kind of the same age Colin would be. And, um, and I, and I view him differently. Like he's not my son, and, yeah. but it, it's nice. It's a nice, like beautiful distraction too at times. Um, mm. It hurts, but it's 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 nice though. So um yeah. Did you hold him? Did you hold yeah, Milo? I, did. I was still in shock a week later. I still mm-hmm. like it was just like I was numb, like uh like I was in like another world. Like um I did. I went to the hospital and I held him and I brought donuts and coffee, iced coffees and I was happy for her. And yeah. the nurse that was with me crying actually delivered my sister's baby. Really? And, yeah. And she was asking my sister how I was doing. And um, yeah, she was in, in the, the nurse that had came in when it told me, I'm sorry, there's no heartbeat. My sister, she, she had a distinct look to her. She, she had like a, a fun mohawk, a cool, like shorter hairstyle. Uh-huh. And my sister was like, oh, yeah. And I was telling her, tell me your story when you came to the hospital. And she's like, I came in and this nurse with this, like, hairstyle had told me, you know, I was seven centimeters to wheel me up. And I just, I remember crying when she said that because that same doctor, I'm sorry, it told me, I'm sorry, there's no heartbeat. So it was kind of sad to hear that. Um, I mean, I'm happy, obviously, for her, but, like, it was the same doctor, you know. (laughs) It yeah. just felt odd. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, but it's Milo is awesome. I'm, I'm like happy to be an aunt. And um, yeah, it's nice to see. He's like seven months now too. And to see kind of what Colin would be doing right now. It's sad though. It, it, you know, when I go home after spending time with him, I just get, I do get sad. I just feel like it's not fair, Colin. He's not here. He was just trying to be born. He was dropping down from my research and, you know, the things I'm trying to put together. I, I don't totally know what happened. Um, but I talked to like an umbilical cord specialist and I've tried to do research and I don't know what happened exactly. But um, I just, he was just dropped down and tried to be born and it got to be too tight, the umbilical cord. And I just, it, you know, it, it just really bothers me that he was just trying, he was doing everything he was trying, supposed to do as a baby. Um, I just, it's not fair that he's not here, and that he doesn't have a life. I feel so bad for him. And then sometimes I just am like, was he waiting or hoping I would help him out? Because he only knew me, I thought maybe, you know, he's in my stomach. Was he trying to get me to help him? Um, Yeah. I am so sorry, Stephanie. Thanks. It just, that really just sucks. It does. It's funny that you said that because I tell people like that's probably the only thing you could say yeah <laughs> when you go through this like there's no really perfect thing to say nope. except for this sucks yeah yeah I'm <laughs> and, sorry and it yeah, sucks it and there's nothing we can do yeah except for maybe tell your story so other moms know and feel comfort hopefully 
Yeah, I feel close to him telling him my story. So it's Good. nice to talk about his birth. It's it's horrible, you know, in one way, but in another way, it's it's all I have with Colin, and yeah. it is Colin. So I do like talking about my birth. I I see a therapist every week. Um, which is so helpful and she's amazing and I talk about Colin like every week for an hour his birth everything about Colin Good. <laughs> and it's it's nice actually it's helpful yeah you feel closer to him so that's yeah cool. yep. well Stephanie I appreciate you telling Colin's story it was beautiful and I'm sorry it was it was so traumatic and I mean it's just it's just awful it's just awful yeah is there anything else you want to tell us about Colin or you want to remember about him so Colin um he was always I always blamed I was hungry this whole pregnancy and (laughs) I didn't move like I'd be chasing around Ben I like to just sit down I'm like I gotta rest Colin wants to rest or Colin's hungry and I would eat Chipotle and egg sandwiches and snacks I just was so hungry so we ate a lot and I feel like that was our bonding time was eating because we were (laughs) hungry um we read the going to bed book every night um with with Ben and Colin in my stomach and I guess that was our only family time I think that we had with Colin so that book is very important to us I didn't know that that would be it but it was um so that book going the going to bed book um was important to us um yeah. Um, Colin was our baby. He looked just like us. He was our child. Um, it was not pregnancy that just didn't work out. I heard someone refer to it as that. And he was a baby. Um, he's our son. So yeah, it was just nice saying that. <laughs> yeah, he is your son. And yeah. I also want to ask you about how Colin got his name. How did you guys choose out that, that name? I love the name Colin. Um, My first thought is Benjamin. And then I thought if I have another one, I like Cora for a girl. And I love Colin. It's strong. It's cute. It's short and sweet. Um, I I, I mean, we're not really Irish, but I just loved it. (laughs) Colin and it just flowed. So it just had to be Colin. And my husband liked it too. We we tossed around some other names, but Colin was just kind of what we were getting kind of going back to. Awesome. When it feels right for both of you, that's also a miracle in its sense. <laughs> yeah. Trying to decide on a name is tough. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. It just flowed. Good. Good. And Robert, is a, is that a family name or? Yeah. So Sam's father, um, his name is, is Robert, Bob, and then his grandfather too oh. is Robert. So awesome. yeah. So we wanted to do something, you know, family related. Um, yeah. We liked it. Colin Robert. That's, yes, it does flow. Stephanie, thank you so much again for sharing about Colin. This was yeah. beautiful. And thanks for having me. I'm so glad uh, that you got to talk about your chubby little baby. Yeah. <laughs> I loved calling him chubby. He didn't look like my first son. My first son was really small at birth and he was chubby and he had his own <laughs> look and he was his own baby. And I just love that so much. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, thank you again, Stephanie. Thanks. Many thanks to Stephanie for sharing that heart-wrenching story of her her sweet son Colin um, that was really really hard and really um, it was good to hear from her head on over to our website stillapartofus.com where you can find the show notes including a full transcript of this interview and any resources that were mentioned where you can sign up for our short and helpful email newsletter where you can learn more about how you can become a patron and support the work it takes to produce this show for just a few dollars a month And lastly, where you can find out how to get in touch with us if you want to share your child's story on the show. The show was produced and edited by Winter and Lee Red. Thanks to Josh Woodward for letting us use his song, Flickering Flame. You can find him at joshwoodward.com. Lastly, subscribe to this podcast and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? Because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. I refuse to join any club that would have me as a member, Groucho Marx.